Hi, this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University, and I'm pleased to provide the COVID-19 weekly pandemic update with data accurate through January 6th, 2022. As this is the first issue for 2022, let me wish you all a very happy and I hope healthy new year. This week, I'm gonna continue the same question I've asked the last few weeks, which is what is happening with the current surge? And then the question that keeps being asked, which is what will 2022 hold? In terms of the current surge, we are seeing something really unprecedented. If you look at the total number of cases reported worldwide, it's the highest it's ever been. Now, a little bit of caution here, because what happens sometimes is the end of the year reports get delayed. People aren't working the week of the prior to New Year's. So let's wait a few days and a few weeks anyway and see what happens. But for the moment, this is really unprecedented in terms of total cases. However, in terms of total deaths, it continues to be essentially level for the last couple of months, which is a good sign uh, in the sense that it's not matching the number of cases, but it's not good because we've had five and a half million deaths to date and about 6,000 deaths a day around the world. We're seeing the same remarkable pattern in the United States, uh, again, with this spiking of new cases uh, and then essentially the same death rate for about three months. Again, nothing to be too proud about because 850,000 deaths to date and about 1,200 deaths a day. I did a little bit of an analysis. Uh, I went back and looked at 20, December 2020. In that month, we saw 6,500,000 new cases in the U.S. and 85,000 new deaths. This December, we saw about the same number of new cases, but only about half the number of deaths. And some folks have said, well, that's obviously good news. The disease is becoming less lethal. That's possible. In fact, it's probable, but it's probably not going to make as big a difference as many people would like, because what we're seeing right now is this very sharp increase in hospitalizations, um, such that the number is really is um, excuse me is about where is the highest it's been, except during the, uh, the spike uh, about a year ago. Um, but what's really worrisome about this is if you look at the distribution by age, that dark blue line is hospitalizations in those 70 and over. And you can see a huge and rapid increase. And what this tells me is that when high risk people, those that are elderly, are getting hospitalized, we're about to see an increase in deaths. The second reason I am less sanguine, less comfortable with the uh, level death rate is because we're seeing COVID spreading very rapidly into our region and around the United States. These were cases three weeks ago, I mean, two weeks ago, excuse me, last week and this week, and we're just seeing an explosion of cases. So I'm unfortunately looking to expect to see uh, an increased number of deaths in the next, next few weeks. Uh, in terms of Tennessee, we're seeing the same pattern with an unprecedented number of cases and again, about a level death rate uh, with that expectation that that will change. Almost 21,000 deaths to date and about 50 to 60 deaths a day. And again, in Tennessee, we're seeing this increase in hospitalizations. In our region, in the Ballot Health region, 280 hospitalized patients as of yesterday. That's the really the third highest spike that we've seen. And as I've pointed out before, the data coming out of ballot is very, very convincing about the importance of getting vaccinated. 91% of the hospitalized patients are not fully vaccinated. 96% of the patients in the intensive care unit are not fully vaccinated. And almost 97%, virtually all of the patients who are intubated are not fully vaccinated. The data here is overwhelming. If you want to avoid serious illness and death, you need to be fully vaccinated. And it isn't just ballot showing this. This is data reported from the CDC uh, from September and November, September through November. And you can see the incidence of uh, per 100,000. And what they're saying is the risk 
of an unvaccinated person getting COVID was about 10 times higher than a fully vaccinated person with boost who's been boosted and the risk of dying is almost 20 times higher. So huge differences in the risk of serious illness and death for those that are not vaccinated. Unfortunately, in the United States, as of yesterday, only 62, less than two thirds of us are vaccinated, even though there's widespread availability of a free vaccine that ranks us about 16th in the world. And within the United States, Tennessee ranks 43rd, the eighth least vaccinated state with only 52% of our population vaccinated. So that's a quick review of where we are with the surge. Question keeps coming in, what will 2022 hold? Everywhere you turn, those headlines, newspaper reports, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? When will the pandemic end? Well, unfortunately, none of us have a very accurate crystal ball. I think there are some things we can say in the short term, I think in the short term, we will probably see increased cases, hospitalizations, and deaths for the reasons that I've explained. I think the current spike will probably be reasonably short in duration, but both steep and high. In other words, we'll see it go up very quickly and go quite high and then not last very long. And I say that because this is what we've seen in, in South Africa. They've had three distinct spikes, this most recent one, which have been associated with the Omicron variant, very high, very steep but relatively short-lived, we hope. But it's important to point out that even if the current spike has a lower death ratio, it will still be very important to us because there will be so many more cases. Remember, you can cut the risk of death in half, but if you have twice as many cases, you have about the same number of deaths. And also, because it's so easy to spread, a lot more people are getting sick with COVID-19, and especially healthcare workers, teachers, and other essential workers are gonna disrupt a lot of functions. So it really, really is important that people get vaccinated now and do the other things like wearing masks, avoid large crowds, and so on to reduce their risk. In terms of the longer term, there's really two conflicting schools of thought. One group says that the pandemic appears to be slowly burning itself out. Omicron is less lethal than Delta, we now have a vaccine. And because Omicron is so widely spread that we'll have more widespread natural immunity. And slowly over the course of some number of months, according to this theory, uh, COVID will burn itself out. The other school of thought is, well, no, not actually, because the virus is spreading widely around the world. There are such low levels of vaccination, even in countries like the United States, but there are many countries with single digit uh, percentages of vaccination, that the conclusion is we will inevitably see new variants with different infectivity, different lethality, different susceptibility. This is sort of the so-called, it will turn into the flu model, right? That we'll continue to have to live with this and have new vaccines. I think neither one is totally convincing at this point, because if you go back to this, the number of daily deaths since the pandemic began, you can look at this chart two different ways. One way you can say, look, we've pretty much had the same number of deaths every day during the course of the pandemic with a few spikes. But even when it's not spiking, it's about at this level. And that would suggest that we're going to continue to see long term the same, roughly the same number of deaths with periodic spikes. Conversely, you can look at this chart and say, no, actually I see something slightly different, which is each of the peaks seems to be getting smaller and going down. Now, what we don't know is what's gonna happen with this most recent set of deaths once, once we uh, see these cases transition into hospitalizations, transition in, uh, into deaths. So I think probably realistically in the next two months or so, we'll have a better picture of what's likely to happen with this pandemic. Until then, I'm afraid that most people will be telling you their opinion, uh, which often is better informed than mine, but it sometimes isn't. I want to end with an analogy, if you will. When you take a vacation and you go to the beach, you really want it to be sunny and warm, but sometimes it's raining. And as much as you might want it to be sunny and warm, you can't make it change. You can't return to normal just because you want to.
So the best thing you can do if you're at the beach and it's rainy is to do the things you need to do to keep dry. You have an umbrella, stay out of the rain and so on. The same is true with the pandemic. As much as we want it to return to normal and eventually we will, for the meantime, the best thing we can do is to get vaccinated, avoid crowds, wear masks, do the things that we know can keep us safe. There's a great deal more information about COVID-19 on the College of Public Health website. If you are sharing this video with others, please let us know. We'd be happy to add them to the, to the mailing list, but please do share it with anyone who might be interested. I'd like to thank Dara Young for editing, producing, and posting every one of these videos that we've put together over the years. And finally, as always, if you have any questions or comments about this video or about COVID in general, I'm very happy to answer them. I get a number of emails every week that I try to answer either directly or by adding them into next week's video. So that's the update for the week. I sincerely hope that you are healthy and well in 2022. And I look forward to seeing you next week.